Hello, I am Dr. Jennifer Gardy, and I'm a senior scientist here at the British Columbia Center for Disease Control. And when I am not being a scientist in this little tiny room, I am a science communicator. So do a lot of work for CBC Television, guest hosting The Nature of Things for Daily Planet on Discovery Channel, I've written a children's book as well. I'm basically a disease detective. I mean, I was inspired to do my job by seeing Dustin Hoffman in Outbreak when I was a teenager. A terrible movie, but I kind of do what he does. In the movie, he was all about trying to track infectious diseases, understand where they came from, how they spread, and how we can use that information to stop the spread. That's what I do, only I do it with some really, really cool new tools that are available to us, namely DNA sequencing. So very much kind of a CSI crime scene investigation, but instead of crimes, I'm investigating cooties. It's a cootie scene investigation. All kids, I think, have this inherent curiosity and mine just never went away. So, you know, I'd go out, I'd be playing in the yard. Uh, my parents used to give me, uh, when we'd have a barbecue and we were having a fish for dinner, they'd cut off the head and they'd send me out into the driveway with a little butter knife and say, okay, go play junior biologist. So I'd go from dissecting fish heads to finding cool little plants and animals out in nature. I just always had to, to find out what was around me. And all of that's just stuck with me. I've just always being curious and always need to know. <laughs> I love busting myths about what the typical scientist looks like because, you know, we all have that. You ask a kid to draw a scientist, they're going to draw somebody in a white lab coat, usually with the crazy white hair. And I love to show people that that's not the case. Scientists come in all shapes and sizes. They can be, you know, fashion forward, overly enthusiastic young women. Science isn't just about science, too. I mean, science is creativity. It's bringing in inspiration from the arts and from the humanities and integrating different disciplines together. I like to show that scientists, we're not just a cookie cutter shape. We come in so many different stripes. I think it's a beautiful representation of uh, the intersection between science and art and the overlap between the two. And it's, it's a really interesting piece. I think it's probably the first time that a genetics lesson has ever been put together with a live cello performance in a totally novel and totally interesting way. And I think it sounds good too. <laughs> you know, I don't want to give it away. I don't know if it's going to be a top 40 hit, but I'm hoping to get people going like, gosh, that was beautiful and I learned something too.